Hello, David here, and the project for today is repairing a grill. This is a Weber model Spirit E310. This was given to me by a neighbor because it needs some repair and they're moving. They don't want to spend the money to move a grill that's going to need parts. And I have a couple of grills, but my daughter doesn't have a grill, so I'm going to fix it up and give it to my daughter. Weber happens to be my favorite grill. Parts are readily available. They're well designed, well built. They get good and hot. It's easy to regulate the temperature. And uh, I've never had a two burner Weber. I have a three burner Weber for my other grill and I do like the three burner Webers. I don't even know if I would consider a two burner Weber. I don't know if the heat heats evenly or if they're too small, but yeah, a three burner would be the minimum that I would get. So if you have a grill and you want to know what the model number is, look inside. Here you find the model number, the serial number, type of gas, number of burner tubes, everything you need to know. Another thing that I like about these Webers is a propane gas connector. You don't need tools. You can turn this nut by hand to connect and disconnect the propane tank. Great feature. Let's take a look inside and see what parts it needs. I don't know about the thermostat yet. I'm going to have to fire it up and see if that's working. It's got cast iron grates. They kind of look borderline. They are starting to rust, so I'm going to replace them. The flavorizer bars are totally shot. Look at that. Definitely going to replace those. The burners, however, are in great shape. These are stainless steel tubes. And if you ever have stainless and want to know if it's the good stainless or the bad stainless, the bad stainless attracts magnets like that. So this is not a high grade stainless. It does have some iron in it. I'm surprised it hasn't rusted sooner. But a good quality stainless will not attract the magnet. Here's the igniter. It's got a collection box that's all rusted away. The collection box does is it collects gas so that the igniter can ignite that gas. Here's the button here. Doesn't create a spark. I know what you're thinking. Did he replace the battery? Yeah, that's a fresh battery. So I'm just gonna replace the whole igniter unit. Ordered some flavorizer bars from Amazon. Not a sponsor. Oh, I see they're individually wrapped for her protection. Stainless steel. Let's see if it attracts a magnet. It attracts a magnet. So this is low grade stainless steel. Here's the grates. Oh, here's the igniter. Gas Pro. It's got a ceramic collector box, so can't rust. Should last forever. Got the push button starter and the igniter. No instructions. This is a cast iron made by Uniflazzy. 
It's a caution on there that you have to wear gloves when you handle them. Made in China. I'm going to burn off the poison before I put any food on here, that's for sure. That's what these look like. There's two of them. Let's see how these parts fit. First of all, I was able to download an owner's manual from the internet. This manual's got a number at 89960, which covers the model 210 and 310. Yeah, the flavorizer bars are specified at 22 and a half inches long. Yeah, those fit fine. There is about a quarter of an inch play side to side. So coming in right at 22 and a half inches. This manufacturer is Shine Star. Model SSWB001. 22 and a half by 2.3 inches by 2.3 inches. Made in China. Let's try on the grates. Those are specified at 17 and a half by 11 and a half each piece. There's two pieces. Dimension does not include these tabs. There's four tabs. Yeah, that's a good fit. Now I'm going to take these out and work on the igniter. Looks like this box is held in place with a bendable tab. Started threading the wires through the two holes, but here's the difference between the new piece and the old piece. The old piece had these tabs to bend out through the holes. This doesn't have tabs, but I assume you bend the end of this bleed for the red wire once it's in the hole. Of course, the opening for to trap the gas is kind of pointed downwards. There's no way to turn it towards the holes and the gas tube, which is that way. Okay, I'm going to mount this underneath. This is the heat shield that goes towards the grill. This little collar, I assume, comes off and goes from the top, which the old unit did not have. And I'll connect the white wire to the white terminal, the black wire to the black terminal. And I notice these terminals are the same size. It's possible to cross them, and I do not know if that makes a difference. Here's the difference. This new unit doesn't have clips that clip into that opening. That's why it's got this threaded collar.
Oh, I hear some clicking. Can you see it? Let's look up the gas. Don't hear any leaks. You always light with the top open. You always light burner number one first. And you bring it to this lightning bolt setting. That's the full setting. Head down. It's not starting. I smell gas too. I turn the gas off. I'm going to wait five minutes for the gas to dissipate. I'm going to have to return that thing, but let's light it with a lighter. Got one of these? Get the other burners going. Yeah, everything's looking good burner-wise. I'm going to shut it off now so that I can take that igniter out. Okay, the grill's fired up minus the igniter. I just put the flavorizer bars on. Now I'm going to put the grates on. I'm going to get them real hot to burn off that factory oils or whatever's on there. And then when they get good and hot, I'm going to season the grates with some vegetable oil. That should keep them from rusting. Let's check out the thermostat. Okay, it's been running about a half hour with all three burners going at wide open throttle and the temperatures are just pushing 430. I would have thought this much time on a hot day we'd be closer to 500. Whoops, I just noticed I had the settings on the lowest setting. I turned them counterclockwise to the stop. That's a low setting. So now I have all three controls set to the highest settings. And I could see the thermometer is creeping up to 500 where it ought to be on the highest setting. So at least now I know on the lowest setting it's going to run at around 400. Yeah, that's getting good and hot. It's only been a couple of minutes. So I'm satisfied with that. Four minutes and we're up to 550. Let's season it with some oil. Some vegetable oil. Well, you know, I think it's too hot because I need to have oil on it to burn off. I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. All right, everything cooled down. I was able to oil the grates. Got them in position. Got the grill running on low. I'll just let that oil burn off the grates. I received another igniter from our friends at Amazon. This one does have the stainless steel collector box. Let's see if it's magnetic. I think this is a true stainless steel because it's not magnetic. That's a good thing. And it's got the igniter. Looks just like the other one. Let's install it. Notice this collector box has the secure mounting tab like the old box.
I could hear it, but I can't see it. Can I just turn the gas on? Let's start it. Okay, it's working. Another burner. Third burner. That's great. You can see how close this gas collector box is to the burner. It made it easier for it to collect the gas for the igniter to work. Okay, let's shut them off. I'm going to prepare the grill for shipping. Don't forget to bend that sheet metal tab. It comes through out of the firebox. I'm going to have to push that up so the igniter doesn't slip out. Just like that. This bottom white wire terminal was bent down a little bit too. I think that helps hold it in as well. I'm going to show you guys how to transport this grill with the use of a compact car. First thing to do is turn off the propane and then remove the tank. Remove the drip tray and the drip pan. I'm going to transport these separately. Same car, but just put them all in a box. Of course, the flavorizer bars and the grates go in the box as well. We don't want them with the grill because they're just going to fall out and transport. On the back of the grill, pull out these cover hinge pins. And then pull out the hinge pins. Then remove the cover. Pack that somewhere in the back seat. Okay, for the grill, you're just going to have to wrestle this thing into the trunk. I don't know how I got this thing in in here in the first place. It's kind of holding. The trick is the rope. Tying it down. I got a 2x4 propping it up so it doesn't fall on me while I tie it down, but it cannot follow me down the road. On the other side of the car, find your tow hook. Put in two half hitches. Moving blanket will come in handy right now.
bring the rest of the rope around the grill. And we want to catch the rope through the hole and the trunk. Now we're going to bring the rope around Through the towing hook on the right side of, underneath of the bumper. I'm not going to tie that off just yet. I'm going to put a loop in here. Just like that to make a pulley. And I'm not going to put the free end through the loop. Now I'm going to draw down on that loop. This gives me extra pulling pressure. Get that good and tight. that off with the hitch. Another hitch. I should be able to remove this for two by four. I want to secure the end of this rope to, so it doesn't go flapping around behind the car. And that, my friends, is how you transport something that's too big for your car. Works for rowboats, canoes, grills, anything that won't fit inside. Tie it down really good, safely. And uh, if you see me stuck on the side of the road, don't forget to pull over and give me a hand. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more great videos from David GPO.